Okay. Good morning from the East Coast of the United States. Good evening, very late evening over in Australia and everything in between, <laughs> wherever you are in the world right now or in the galaxy for our galactic friends who are watching us as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm so excited. This was a kind of a last minute video, but I always love, love when you text me tomorrow and you're like, let's do a show. I'm like, yes, let's yep. do a show. Let's do a show, kiddo. Let's do a show. <laughs> Boy, oh boy, Bryce, it's like what a time, what an absolute time. You know, and, you know, and it's like, and I was listening to something the other day and they were saying, right, now, we were meant to be ruled by the Julian calendar. That, mm -hmm. was, our, that was our right calendar. Yeah? Yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar created that calendar. So given that calendar and given we are in the month of January, on the 7th of January is Christmas Day. Yes. That is the right Christmas Day, which makes now the 13th of January, we are in New Year's Eve. We're in New Year's Eve, kiddo. And the 14th yeah. will be it will be New Year's Day. And it's like, and I've got, we have to go back. We are going to be going back to the Julian calendar. Yes. And if people it are not aware of this, the Gregorian calendar was created by the <laughs> and Christmas Day on the 25th is to celebrate the birth of you know what. Yes. Yes, it's so, and that's, and if people are confused by that, they add, or they added months in, like December, DECA is 10, but it's our 12th month, um, November 9, Nova 9, Octo, October 8, but that's 10, 11, 12, S SEPTA, September is 7, August is 8, so you can see where they have, you can, they have to tell you the truth somewhere. And so yeah. they are telling you the truth in the in the in the month names. And so yes, and I know, and you know when they when they switched over the calendars from the Julian to the Gregorian, do you know how many days they eliminated to, in order to catch them up to the Gregorian? Ten. Ten oh days. My God. Ten days of darkness. Oh, oh ten days. Ten days. Ten days. And he's that's like five hundred years ago. Yeah. What oh, ten days of my God. necessary? You know, I was saying to some, I was saying to someone the other day, and it's like people from here in Australia were going, "That Bryce is just, she's like an encyclopedia." I went, <laughs> "Oh yeah," I said, "She is right." I said, "I call her, I call her. It's like my little encyclopedia." Only because with stuff I enjoy studying. Wanted, so I, I don't like. I don't here, it's like, and I said, and it just calms out. It's like, oh, and that, and that, and that, and that, and I go, okay, okay, cool. Right? I'm just and, a nerd. <laughs> I mean, like, amazing. So for me, I just went and and Julius Caesar created that Julian calendar in 446 BC. 460 BC. And it's like, oh, my God. So it's about going back to that, yeah? Yes. Now, talking about the cabal. I think I sent you a text message or I think I rang you and said something to you, you know, like you you just wake up to messages from me and I'm going, oh, my it. God. I love it. Oh, my <laughs> God, Bryce. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So it was all about it's like I had done like this meditation and and I'd also had been reading for someone and what I got through was, oh, my God all of the Born to be Free clearing work that I've been doing for 30 years is all the programming, fears and negative beliefs that they put into place for humanity in order to control us. Oh, my God. And then they've backed it up by everything to do with the media, yeah. the movies, what's on television, what we read, yeah. the news, everything, everything is to reinforce all of those fears and all of those negative beliefs. Could have knocked me over with a feather, girlfriend. I just went, oh, my God. 
can we like let me just let me just say that how amazing god is our god not their god but our god tomorrow god had you learn all this stuff you were given opportunities to actually really be around a lot of hollywood people a lot of them good but of course you got the sharks the shark tank swimming around you were always kept safe you were always kept protected yep. because your work is valuable you're doing god's work and, and and i think sometimes god keeps us like ignorant of what's around us so that we don't panic you know and i just think that's so amazing like look how amazing god is because he used you yes. in such a powerful way in such an incredible way in this world and and it's just i like every time i think about you i'm just in awe of what you have done um for the good for the light it's amazing and, and your your job is just is snowballing on itself it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and that's just unbelievable um that that you're the, that we are we are a grace to like have you in this timeline because you've been such a powerful tool you know to help this uh the white hats i mean that I mean, you i consider you a white hat yourself so you, does that make sense look it's like as i've said to you you know and i say to people all the time it's like it's i'm the instrument yeah. that is housing the soul the soul has come here to do this yeah, and I am just the instrument to be to use to be able to use my voice. Yeah, mm -hmm. to be able to do my little antics and whatever. Yeah, in order to to get people to wait, like to wake up. Yeah. You know, but I it, but I mean, it blew me out of the water, and I could and I just went, my God, like all of those little children, because in the in the little kids program, they come in and they're six years of age, yeah. and from six to ten, and they come in and they lay out on the floor and they do all of the clearing work, and they do pictures, so they do pictures before they do the clearing work, because I want to see how this works on children. So they do their drawings and then they, I put them to a side, one side, and then the clearing work gets done. And then at the end of the session, they do another drawing and you see the before and the after. Oh, and the before, it's, it's fascinating, Bryce. The before will be like black and, and red and, you know, angry faces and things. The after, it's pink, it's blue, it's clouds, it's birds, it's flowers, yeah. And it's like this is how I, this is how I'm able to ascertain where the child is at when they complete their their um their clearing work, and then they get their little clearing of the negative um the negative emotions CD, so that when they have a bad day at school, they just come home and they just go in and they put their little CD on and they lie on the bed and they just get cleared of the negative emotions. The same as the adults have that as well. So you know, I just went like, oh my god, God, oh my god, God. <laughs> When I realise it's like I've been doing this, I've been freaking, you know, fighting the for like for 30 years. Yeah. For 30 years fighting what they have been trying to put into like humanity. So and all these born to be free graduates are out there and born to be free. It's like that's the name of, you know, of, of the, the program and it works out to a number 17. I know. I know. Talk about suck me dry and call me dusty. I mean, I just go, like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And I created that way back then. Way well, back then. So one of your biggest lessons that you've taught people, especially on this channel, is about listening to your gut because the gut is ah. the voice of the voice of your soul so let's think about this yeah. guys let's just sit, sit back for a moment and listen to what tamara just said so tamara if you this whole time if you had been listening to your head would yeah. you be where you are now no you no. followed your gut in all these secret I, I my gut, Every like i follow my gut all the time and yeah. it's like you know like and 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 my dad my you know my parents it's like they you know they had their faults and everything else but you know the way that they raised me 
And it was always about, and as Dad said to me, mankind lost its way when it made money its God. You never, ever put money before God, ever, yeah. ever. When you put money before God, it's over. It's over. Yeah. Forget about it. Yeah? And I yeah. mean, it's like, and that has always stuck with me. So I've had this strong gut feeling about things. And like you were saying about like being in America and around all of these different people, and, you know, and we were just talking about that before with Lisa Marie Presley, like I've had phone calls coming in from all of the people that I know over there going like, oh, my God, that know her or they would say knew her. Yeah, and I'm looking Those at it and going, aware, well, you know, like is she, is she really dead or not, yeah? But, yeah, like, she, over there it would be the gut feeling of, no, nah, don't like them, not reading for them. And I go, and they go, oh, so-and-so wants you to read for them. No, I'm too busy. I don't have time. And they go, T, you do. You've got time. No, no, I'm, no, sorry, don't, I don't have time. I don't have time. And it was like I just knew who was okay to read for, who was okay to do the clearing work on, who was not. And then, no, and, then and then whose show to go on. Like I and I had the most most amazing relationship with a lady at Entertainment Tonight called Bonnie. And Bonnie, oh, Bonnie was like my heart. Bonnie was just the most amazing person. And everybody in the entertainment industry knew Bonnie. She'd been there like from the year dot in the entertainment industry. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, and, and whenever I did anything to do with Entertainment Tonight, it was through Bonnie. Bonnie would go, hey, girl, hey, girl. When are you coming over? I'm um, coming over such and such. Okay, do you want to come on? Do you want to do something? Yeah, okay. I'll come on. I'll do something. Okay, girl. I mean, it's and the way that I got onto entertainment tonight was like being generous to somebody, helping somebody. And when I look back over, people go, oh, how did you get this? How did you get that? How did you get here? How did you get that? By being kind to people. By helping this person, being kind to this one, lending money to this one, or giving money to this one. So it's a, it's it's about always listening to that and going from that. And if you do that, you'll have money. Everything will be taken oh, yeah. care of. But you put money oh, yeah. before God. And there was another thing that I kind of was saying to the girls. They went, you know, you were, oh, we're all oh, boy. We've just had the um, um, Cardinal Pell. Has, has they've announced he's died in the Vatican and he was the one here with all of of oh yeah oh yeah and they're talking about doing a state funeral for him and you've got all of these people up in arms going no way and you've got these others you know all of the people that are going oh yes 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 we've got to have a state funeral and all of these others and you know the victims of all of that up in Ballarat when he was up there. Oh, I tell you. Anyway, so he's he's gone. He's gone. Well, they've announced that he's gone. He probably went ages ago, <laughs> as we all well, know. Well, let's um, can yep. we pause on Lisa Marie Presley before? Because I, I know that yep. people who are watching right now, especially if you're in America, you don't know what we're talking about because the news just broke. Now, remember, oh. tomorrow is like 16 hours ahead of us. She, for those who are not aware, Lisa Marie, Marie Presley, who is Elvis Presley's, I think his only child, right? Um, yeah. She a allegedly, according to the reports, died of cardiac arrest like eight hours ago as, as a, at the time of recording this video, which is 6.40 a.m. on East Coast time. Now, I'm going to give you guys, because I think this is like, I started kind of like giggling when I was like putting this all together because you guys know I've talked to so, uh, uh, Tamara and I have, I think, talked off camera a lot about how like organizations like Scientology, Nexium, they take tidbits of truth and they mm. manipulate them. Right. Yeah. So even Scientology itself, there's tidbits of the reactive mind and the Dianetics that is actually founded in a lot of truth and then it's manipulated. Well, you guys know I, I talk about Scientology a lot. I kind of watch it. And Scientology is now being, um, from what I understand, is allegedly, I have to be careful about what I say because Scientology is very litigious, but uh, they allegedly are, are about to be popped. 
Now we know that a lot of celebrities are involved. This is a very rich, uh, and, and I want to say a lot of most celebrities, I believe most celebrities are actually good people who have no idea what's going on in the, I mean, I think it's just a small group of, of people that are really doing the nasty stuff. But yeah. David Miscavige, who is the head of Scientology, his wife has gone missing. Leah Remini, who left Scientology years ago. Years ago. ago. He went Where missing years ago. Years ago. Yep. They can't get the LAPD. The Clearwater police are all tied up in it. They cannot get. It's been a huge effort. And I have to really applaud the ex-Scientologists for really putting their neck out to try to get justice. Well, there's another court case going on right now in America. And this is all going to tie together why I kind of got a little giggled against Danny Matherson. Now, Danny Matherson was an actor from that 70s show here in America. He he played the pothead. He, um, he is a big time Scientologist. And there is a huge trial going on right now in a trial against him and the jury left it left in a mistrial and they're going to have to retry it again well lisa marie presley who at one point was tied up in scientology and has left she's literally david miscavige's worst nightmare was due to testify in the new trial against danny matherson which could have potentially really opened up cases against scientology for and then she just happened to have a heart attack last night like some you know when you start to connect the dots something's not adding up and so i kind of started to like and remember she was also married to our um our favorite pop star michael jackson for a while so i i personally i, I you know god bless her family if she did pass away my, my heart goes out to them but i'm something is happening there's something and you even said that too. Something seems to be going on that is really pushing the ball forward in all yep. of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's called, okay, you know, and this is also, this has got a lot to do with, as we know, all of these people are being announced as dying and they've all had this. Yeah. Yeah. So that's oh, another thing. So, so, yes. the word, so the word, the word, the info that I got from people on the inside, yeah, is that um, she was at home. Her partner went to get the children or take the children to school, came back. She was passed out on the floor. They did uh, CPR, rang the ambulance. They came. They got her. Um, took her into the hospital and put her into a, a coma. This is what they said, yeah, uh, but then she died. So they put her into like an induced coma. So and Priscilla, Pris Priscilla Presley, her mom is still alive, correct? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Priscilla is about, I think she's around about, 76, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I know um, Lisa Marie was only, or is only 54 years old. She's, she's young. Yep. Um, yep. So, so it will be very, very interesting to see what happens when all of them come out that we know who are going to come out. Yeah. Whether she is one of them that's going to come out as well. Whether this is whether this is a part of what has been going on with her father, or this time right. that we're being told has been going on, but it's like but I had the privilege of talking to her and her daughter um, at Michael's memorial. Yeah, I was yes. on the phone. Yeah, I was on the phone. Um, wow. Well, yeah. and it's and I know that David Miscavige. Um, he had actually, let's see, David, um, here we go. David Miscavige, who is the head of Scientology. I was watching a report this morning from one of the, who's super close to Tom Cruise, like besties with Tom Cruise. Um, apparently, allegedly, from what I understand, he had like actually, there is thoughts that he had actually really threatened um, Lisa Marie's life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, well, they do. So, they do all of them because who's that great guy with Lisa uh, with um, Leah Rimini? That Leah Rimini, Mike Render. Ah, oh, love Mike. I love him. Um, love Mike and 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 her. It's like she's she's amazing. She oh, oh, I love amazing. her. What what one incredible soul is there? An incredible you, soul. 
Yeah. She doesn't take shit. And I, I actually, so you're going to laugh at me tomorrow. I am dying to talk to Leah Remini. Like I would love to talk to her. And so I looked up her address for her fan mail and I wrote her a handwritten letter to see if she would come on my channel. So to talk about her story, because but the I, thing, but the, thing, the thing is, Bryce, it's like, you know, as, as we, you know, the things that we've talked about and as you and I have sort of said in years gone by, if you're meant to be there, you will be there. If you are meant yeah. to 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 interview her, you will interview her. Yeah, you know, it's like this is about God. So yeah. and this is where this is where my morning mantra comes in, which is I now do the work that only I can do on the planet and nobody else can do. I now fill yes. the places on the planet that only I can fill and no one else can fill. Yes. Well, I, yep. I'm putting up to God. I just sent a letter and I said I would love because I love her so much. And a lot of and I will say one thing I really like about her. And this is just from what I've seen from her um, interviews. And I understand a lot of people come out of these cults and they um, turn they completely go into like eight. They, they become atheists. And I can understand that. Like, I can understand that you you would have trauma from the abuse of, of what people do use, do like to use spirituality as an abuse oh, tool sometimes. Absolutely. I, I, absolutely. And so I understand yeah. that they have to back away for a while. I get that. But she herself seems to still have a faith in a higher power, despite everything. And if whatever's happened to Shelly Miscavige, I mean, Leah Remedy is fighting for that woman. And Yep. I get emotional and I thought it, if we would all be that lucky to have somebody all Not the it makes me emotional and all the abuse that's come her way to sit there and say this is a human being that people haven't seen where Shelly yep where has Shelly you know and the fact that she's made her name a household name so people don't forget about her and that's love yeah. That is the most beautiful form of love to, to for, yeah. for one person to love another person that much to fight for them to make mm -hmm. sure that they are okay. And I thought that is the world. Leah Remedy is leading the world that we need to be moving Absolutely. into. Absolutely. Now, that's also an interesting one as well because I was looking at, oh, you know, it's like I would, I, I'm a member of Stan. So I went on Stan the other night and I went, what am I going to watch? So I watched a documentary on... I watched a documentary on Clive Davis. Interesting, very interesting. Then I watched a documentary on uh, Quincy. Yeah, because, I mean, Quincy, he started off in the music industry way back then, yeah. way yeah. back, yeah? Um, and it was like and in this documentary and people, like if you haven't seen it and if you get Stan, if you have Stan over there, but the, it's a documentary on Quincy Jones. It was a recent one. Yeah, it wasn't all that long ago. And uh, and there he is with all of his 10 kids in the lounge room, sitting in his big chair where, where I've got photographs of me with my girlfriend, Brenda, and Latoya and some others around Quincy. Uh, at his place for Christmas because Christmas time at Quincy's place is like is huge, right? He just has this big open house, yeah, and all of these 10 children. So anyway, so I looked at that in regard to Quince and just went, right, okay, now what am I going to watch? Mm, uh, okay, who else is there? Anyway, so I looked at some other documentaries, okay? So then I went, hmm, okay, no, no, I'm not ready to go to bed. Um, what am I going to do now? So I looked and it had Laurel Canyon. And I went, oh, I wonder what that is. So I clicked on that and up it came. And the little, the little spiel said Laurel Canyon was the start of the music industry in LA. Oh, my God, goes me. So I know Laurel Canyon because it goes yeah. from, yeah, it goes from LA, Beverly Hills, and you go through up through Laurel Canyon to get over to, you know, to the to the valley. Yep. Anyway, so I'm watching it and I'm going, oh my God, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. And it's the story. Yes. Yeah, she's yeah, that's it. That's a part of the documentary. Yes, yeah, and I, I was telling 
Tamar, when I, I lived in LA for like six years after college and I was, I was up in Laurel Canyon, the, the Hollywood Hills, this whole area is really cool. I know there's a lot of mischievous, mischievous things that have happened there, but it's a really cool, here we go. Laurel Canyon, 1960s. That's it. That's it. So what they did, they did this documentary and it's all about the start of it yep there it is yep and she was leaning out the window and she was doing something giving something to somebody and the guy had his photograph he said i'm going to just hold still there Joni. i'm taking a photograph of this yeah so it's so it's 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 uh and it's original footage that they took back then yeah so there she is sitting sitting on the ground playing her guitar and singing and i'm going Oh, my God. So then you've got um, all of these different musos that are there to do with the eagles, to do with the birds. So all of you people that are young, it's like you won't remember this, but have a look at this because then you'll get the understanding of how it all yes. started. But all of these musicians came from all over America because it, um, New York was the music scene but then it changed. So they all went, they ended up in LA and because they didn't have much money, they all ended up living in Laurel Canyon, which was all big, it's hippie, yeah? And they were saying that you could go from one person's house to another. There was always food in, the, in people's refrigerators or their cupboards. So if you were hungry, you just went into a house, you opened up the refrigerator and you had some food. That, and they were all there to support each other. The thing that blew me out of the water was, um, oh, my God, like what is his name? James Brown. So James yes. Brown uh, wrote, composed a song called, um, here we are, I'm getting into this, James Brown, James Brown. Um, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. He wrote this song and he only got half of it done. Desperado. So I he's there and he's song. playing away and he's doing and he got up to as far as he went. So then the guy who ended up being being the head of the Eagles went, great song, man. And he went, really? And he goes, yeah. And he went, hmm. Yeah, it's like I've only got it up to this point. I don't know what else to do with it. Do you want it? Do you want to finish it off? Don't this tell me it was Hotel goes, California. Yeah, this guy goes, yep, I'll finish it off. Great. He finished it off, okay. They recorded it on the Eagles album, didn't do anything. Linda Ronstadt got hold of it. She was singing. She was singing it at the Troubadour because the Troubadour on Sunset is where they would all go. All of these musicians would hang out at the Troubadour. Yep. that's where they yep. all started. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so she started singing it. Then, oh, what's the name of the guy that did? It was Asylum. Asylum was the name of the of the um, of the the company the record company, Asylum, and Asylum was created by the guy that ended up being Joni Mitchell's boyfriend that ended up managing her, yeah, and and this, this other guy, right? So they went in together. They started Asylum Records that signed all of these people because none of the other record companies would sign them. I mean, it's That's just like it's, it's hilarious. So when this happened with um, Desperado with Linda Ronstadt, then the Eagles had it on there. So the record company guy took that album and promoted it everywhere and then that's the Eagles took off. So they took off from the song that was James Brown's song in the beginning. But this is what they were like. It was like, hey, man, I don't know what to do with this. I've only got this much. Do you want to finish it off? You take it. You take it. And this you, take it. It. you take it, you have it. And then you've got the mummers and the puppers. And then in came that song that I got ages ago, which calling out around the world, are you ready for a brand new beat? Summer's here and the time is right for dancing in the streets. That's the mummers and the puppers. 
Yes. So what did I buy myself for my birthday? I went off to a record store and I went, I want the best of the Mamas and the Poppers, Crosby, Stills, Nash. Yes. Because they were Crosby, Stills, Nash before they become young because Young was doing something on his own and then he decided to join them. I mean, it was amazing. The birds. Yeah. The birds. I mean, so I got all I got all of these CDs. So I'm having a wonderful time when I'm driving up to my country house and I'm singing away to all of these songs. So it's like, so I went, wow. And they said, Mama Cass, her doors were always open, always. Her house was open and people could just come and go and they'd sit, they'd sing, they'd be, this is how they lived. And I went, and then in came the money. Then yeah. in came the big record companies. And they went to these guys and what they did, they actually did deals. They bought their talent to sign with their record label and then that's when it all started to go belly up. And one of the um, the young blonde girl and her husband from the Mamas and the Papas, she said, we ended up leaving, leaving our gorgeous little house in Laurel Canyon and we ended up in a big house in Bel Air because we, we had all the money. Joni Mitchell ended up in a house next door to my girlfriends in Bel Air, you know? So yeah. it's it's like just like amazing. And then with Mama Cass, yeah, that's her there. Yeah, this, these two here, they ended up, you know, so they all ended up splitting up because of the money that came in. And it's like, and, and then what they've done, of course, the money there, then the came in to then control with the all of these incredible people with their talent you can I tell mean, a it's just, it you is can just tell. heartbreaking this and this is what i said the this these people their souls were like a gift from god to the planet to do with music to bringing yeah. like like love and beauty like onto the Healing. planet and the music from the 60s and the 70s, and I grew up, so that was why I listened to growing up because I was my parents. And so we listened to what my parents listened to. I grew up, my mother, The Birds is one of my fa my mother's favorite bands. And that's, people aren't familiar with that, that song, Turn, 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 from the Bible yeah. to everything. Every season, turn, 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 turn. Yeah. 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 Um, hotel, I'll tell you a funny story. I thought when I was really, really young, I thought my dad wrote Hotel California because it was the only song he could play on the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and so in my child brain that was my dad's song and i would hear it on the radio and i'd be like but that's dad's song yeah. but it's one of the most hotel california is one of the most brilliant songs absolutely, ever. absolutely. and it's absolutely. You know, yeah. it, desperado is beautiful and there's something there's something very hu there's humanness there there's humanity there that connects us no matter how rich you are no matter how poor you are no matter what gender you are what race you are what nationality you are everybody can connect through art because they feel it and yep. you can tell the difference between then when they actually wrote this from their own yep. soul versus yes. what's being put out now absolutely absolutely you know and what's being put out now is what they're told to do now one yep. thing that was like that blew me out of the water um the other day it's like i you know like i listened to some people i've followed you Tsava. From the very very beginning that that girl has got the most amazing gift the most amazing gift she has said from the word go jfk jr is alive diana is alive and she will not back down from it she is just you know and it's like and and what did she say something about um she said something she used to say something about and it's like something about we won't have a real president in the White House, you know, and then people were going like, oh, my God, we'll God in and da-da-da-da, and it's like it's not him. It's not him. It's not the right anyway. So Yutsava is great. Another one that I've listened to a lot um, is Linda Paris. I yeah? love her. Yes. Snarky, snarky McAllister and her dog uh, Truman. Uh, I mean, she just cracks me up. And she would have all of all of this writing that would come through 
from somebody by the name of Christian 21. And I'm going, whoever this guy is, this guy knows stuff. He knows stuff. Now, he then...